time was 1993, so 28 years ago. Quite, uh, quite some time. Doubt that you remember that, Debs. Um, but we'll go uh, up to the C1 men's 500 metre start line in just a second. And uh, Adil Mojali Mohammadam from Iran will be in lane one. Jose Cordova, the Cuban in lane two. And as we said, the Cubans having a fantastic world championships here. Now, Oleg Tarnovsky from Moldova. Brother Sergei has been in great form. So it'll be interesting to see if Oleg can match that. He was the bronze medalist from 2019 in this event. Martin Fuxer, Martin he's, Fuxer. Had, a he's season, had a busy season. season. The Padler, Padler, he'll, Padler, be in lane he'll be in four. lane four. And Belarusian Maxim Piatru, he was fifth in the C1 1000 meter race yesterday, the Belarusian, so watch out for him. We'll have the German, Konrad Scheibner, real character, and uh, maybe looking to take on the mantle of Sebastian Brendel, who alongside Izakiros dos Santos, the Brazilian, have dominated this sport of C1 for quite a long time. Konrad Scheibner. Well, he was first place in a really tightly fought race over the 1,000 metre distance just ahead of Martin Fuxer yesterday. We'll see what that took out of him today. Matthias Kaminski, the pole, just missed out on the medals yesterday in the C1000. He'll be in lane seven. Italian Carlo Tacchini, third of the World Cup in Bernal. He'll be in lane eight. And Italians, as we said, are having a great day today at the World Championships. So don't put it past him to be in amongst it. And Taras Mishuk, the Ukrainian, will be over in lane nine. So 500 metres, C1 event, not Olympic. We do have a European champion in here, Martin Fuxer. And, and in a way, Martin Fuxer, the Czech paddler in lane four, this perhaps is preferred distance. He's won the Super Cup recently over 350 metres in Oklahoma. And he's been a world medalist before in the 500 metres several times. And he's clearly in good form because he was a silver medalist yesterday in the 1,000 metres. There he is. And his brother, Petter, going very, very well in the under-23 World Championships recently. So they've got a good partnership perhaps for the future in the C2. Comrade Scheibner there in lane six, distinctive pink boat. He's had a great season. Third at the European Championships winner of the C1 event here. There's Piatru in lane five. So it could be these middle lanes, unlike the men's K2 where we saw lane nine take the win. We could well see the leaders from the middle lanes here. Czech Republic, Martin Fuchser in four, Belarus, Maxim Piatru in five, and Konrad Scheibner, the German, in six. So, men's C1 500 metres, final A, about to get underway. So, paddles are ready, starter just wants to be sure. Good clean start there, they get away well, all of them, perhaps apart from lane five, the Belarusian Piatru leaving himself a little bit of work to do. Konrad Scheibner has gone into an early lead. You can see that from above, the great drone shot there. It's windy, difficult challenge for canoe paddlers, Debs, but quite often it's the crosswind that the canoe paddlers struggle with more than the tailwind. Yeah, this is looking pretty straight, and from uh, my experience in the B final this morning, I think, I think it is pretty straight. It's not coming from one side or another, so... Hopefully that will make it a good fair race for them all. Yeah, which is what we want, isn't it? You, we have difficult conditions, that's what happens. It's an outdoor sport, we have to deal with that. But um, nice when it's fair, and if there is a wind, it's right the way across the course, either headwind or tail. Your preferred, not the tail. Yeah. But um, <laughs> Conrad Scheibner, well, he doesn't seem to mind, does he? Because he got away to a fantastic start, and he's just continued to lead. Here is someone really making his mark in canoe, and I think he's young. He's got a great future ahead of him and he's looking to dominate this race and who knows, he may well look to dominate the sport in the next few years. Martin Fuchser right over on the right-hand side of his lane. The judges will be looking at that. It shouldn't really be there, but he's going well and he's looking to put 
Conrad Scheibner under pressure as they approach the Red Boys. This is where it really, really hurts the arms, the legs, indeed the whole body beginning to burn. And this is when the hours and hours of training right the way through the winter really, really count. We can see Martin Fuchser there. Look how narrow that boat is. Incredibly difficult to balance. Now it looks to me that Conrad Scheibner has the edge, but Fuchser is putting his foot down now. The final few strokes. This is down to who has the strength right over the last couple of metres, and it is Conrad Scheibner. Well, he was asked the questions by Martin Fuchser, but he had the answers, and Conrad Scheibner maybe I just thought there, perhaps he'd gone too early, but he had another gear to go through to push on when he was really under pressure, and that's the sign of a, a champion. Yeah, probably a, a kind of different approach to a race from, from the Germans. They sometimes seem to come through at the end, but he just held his own the whole way through. It was a really confident race. Yeah, I, th I think perhaps you're right there. It's, it's a um, indication of someone's confidence to go out hard, to go out early. I always remember in the men's kayak, Tim Brabant used to do that. Get out hard, get out early. And if you're in good form, you can hold on to it. It gives you confidence to know you're out there in front. Certainly, that seems to be the case for Conrad Scheibner. Actually, just looking at the finish line, it's like a, quite an easy win. I'm sure he won't say that when he's interviewed, but he had a decent margin ahead of Martin Fuchser in second. It looked like Oleg Tonowski took the third place there. So, Deb, you've raced in a couple of uh, boats this weekend. Uh, how easy is it to go from a from a K1 to a K2 back to a K1 again because some of these paddlers have been C2 and C1. Yeah, I, I find it pretty tricky actually. Um, just a totally different feeling from having someone pushing you or someone pulling you to being out there all on your own and the boat reacts really differently when you get in the K1. It's a little bit uh, twitchy and reacts quite quickly. Um, so yeah, it's pretty tricky and it's something that I, I want to improve on. Indeed, but well, just hopefully we're going to get Conrad Scheibner down on the pontoon with Ross. Conrad, what an incredible weekend for you. You're now two-time world champion. Unbelievable. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, if someone told me I would be double world champion after this weekend, I would have said he's crazy, especially after such a long season. But I'm so happy to be here and to win both races. It really means the world to me after Tokyo. And it's a really great start to the new Olympic cycle for you to come in here and to, to win the first two World Championship titles you compete in. Yeah, um, after Tokyo I said it's already on for Paris. So this is already on the road to Paris and I'm just so happy to get away with two gold medals, two World Champions titles. Crazy. Well done, Conrad. Well done. Thank you so much. Well, Conrad Scheibner, he's quite a character, isn't he? He's a real delight to hear interviewed. Someone who's on the up, getting better and better. There he's confirmed in 146. I think the kite paddlers, the number of kite paddlers will be pleased with that time. Um, ahead of Martin Fuchser, who took silver, and Oleg Tarnowski from Moldova, who took, uh, took the bronze medal. And a little bit disappointed with his performance in Tokyo, so it must be a real challenge to then to push on and to, uh, to sort of reflect and then move ahead to the next event of, after a very long season. Yeah, definitely tricky to, to pull yourself out of a bit of disappointment.